the video. So this is me making up for that potential part that it's going to add on because I don't want to just stare at the camera for 30 seconds. It's just weird. Oh. Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. So it's going to be a real quick video for a couple reasons. One, we're going to do another one of our one take Mondays with Mr. Happy. Uh, it's just about 5 p.m., almost 5 p.m. where I am, and the live letter is at 2 a.m. for Final Fantasy XIV. So I'm recording this at the very end of my very long Octopath slash Ultima Weapon Ultima stream that I did today. And I just want to get it done in one take, no editing, get it right over to YouTube, which means there might be some extra stuff at the beginning, but whatever. So because of that, we are going to be doing the sponsor list here at the beginning. I even have our Patron of Light with their image uh, here in the OBS, which I'm going to pull up in a second here. So for those of you wondering, the sponsor list is for people who have supported the stream over on Patreon to help combat hashtag demonetize. It's an ever-growing list of names that I actually need to go through and see if all the names are accurate sometime this week before uh, State of the Realm if I have time. So anyway, uh, for the first person we have, we have our Patron of Light. We have Kuja Cross, and uh, we have we have uh, Kuja Cross on the Genova server. We have Kuja Cross on the Avent FC on Genova. Jesus, I could not get it done because my my document kept auto scrolling down for some reason. I guess I was I guess I got stuck with the mouse cursor down or something. But anyway, thank you for being the Patron of Light for supporting above and beyond over the past several months. Thank you. And uh, there's an image they provide for me every week, so enjoy that because they're usually pretty well taken images. So we then have a ton of other sponsors that we have to do, and I should probably drag those over to this monitor, so I'm speaking into the microphone. We have the Sabo Empire. Uh, these are standard sponsors. We have the Sabo Empire, Mizra, Red Wings of the Baron FC from Zalera, Frey Blackheart, Cytus Oreo and Chiva, Sid Hellwind of Gilgamesh, Afro Ninja from Malboro, Cheese Cat from Leviathan, Sploda, That Lame Weave, Ashenomy of Cerberus, Argati Tristram, uh, Fafarian, Rendell, Giraffes Will Rule, Stevie Rex, and Neon. We have our elite sponsors, Just One Fox, Shadow Link of the Tonberry Server, Dom, Asuka Wake from Genova, Lim uh, Lamilia, Nella of Midgard Sarma, Sarah and the Avalanche family on Malbor, John Yatsu. Uh, so I, this person sent me a, a way to pronounce their name, and I don't have it in front of me right now. But it was, it was uh, also the name I think they gave me was actually updated. So I don't know why this list is actually not updated properly. Uh, it looks like they have it right here. No, no, yeah, it was uh, Zernik of. Org 13. So there you go. That was that was the one that we were looking for because it was it was a different name and then they did the whole X thing with uh, with you know Xehanort and whatnot. Uh, so Kifka and the Great Eagles on Exodus, Dark Graver, Kadayoshi from Kujata, Skia Savonia from Ragnarok, Ross Effin from Exodus, Rhinelander, West Off the Purple Warrior, Edric Redsteel on Exodus, Lexi Valentine, Matar and the Revivus FC from Zodiac, Sour Cream and Tribes from Genova, Renault Chakar, Goisha Buffer of Siren, Hirsch first of Perry, Phoenix Down FC on Goblin, and Siren from Zodiac. We have then for our premium sponsors, Kano Zuki of Genova, U Star Long Coral, Sethal, Sarah Frost from Behemoth, Diablo, Holy Tabasco, Red Thorn Asura, Kern Ioni, Asgen Hawk, Crass 5, Mustang, Serenity FC on Ultros, Kat Kazuma, Serial Kira on Cactar, Ignis Fairgun from Diablos, Lesser of Famfrit, Knocked Quarters from Excalibur, Krovos Moonscar, Private Mikey, Spike, Nadine Kurosami, Rudy Rudiger, Tink Colossus, Killer Hackman, Roll Jr., Ramil Gaming, and Kiltastic Jones. It's a hell of a list, and uh, I don't get any better at reading it off every week, as you can tell. But with that, I don't want to do any more talking. There's a bunch of things I want to say, but I actually just want to go right into answering the Q&A. And since we're doing this in one take, boop, it's going to pop up on the screen. And then we're just going to scroll down as we answer the questions. So question number one, hello, Mr. Happy, was wondering what you do or do you know what other people do to keep them awake during long playtime like raid time or heaven on high clearing? Sounds like you just have, and this don't take this the wrong way, just have to give a short attention span because whenever I'm doing something, I don't have to struggle with that. I sleep a regular human sleeping schedule, like I try to get my eight hours a night, you know, with some variance, minus one or two hours, plus one or two hours here and there. Uh, and that's it. Like, there's no secret to it or anything. You know, if you're really fucked up, you could, like, take something like Adderall, but I don't think that's actually going to help you raid. So I would not recommend taking Adderall before raiding, because you're going to completely ignore all seven other people just be like... <sighs> for like 18 hours straight and it's going to be the worst experience you've ever had and you probably don't want that uh but that's that's it i mean i also stream when i'm streaming it's a lot easier to stay awake it also uses more energy though so it's a give and take and it's just something i'm kind of used to doing now but yeah there's no secret to it you know i don't i don't have a secret to it at the very least i don't know if other people do anything special but i just sleep normal most of the time and then i just do the content and that's it. So I don't really have much in the way of special advice for you on that front. 
Question number two. Hello. Hello. I have a few questions this week regarding synced gear, stat weights on tank gear. More importantly, the accessories. I feel there's an oversight. Did research after my friend's regulars for A1 Savage Minimum. No echo group said it couldn't be done without overmelts, putting me in the back at square one recruitment. Oh, yeah. You've been doing this for a while now. This whole min trying to do everything minimum item level uh, extravaganza. I see we're looking at my stats with the four point X tank accessories. Gives the max strength points up to 195 as one. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep up with you for all this stuff because I don't really care about minimum item level maximization you just go for whatever is like the highest item level stuff at the time so i don't that's that's it it's just and also you're comparing gear from different time periods that have been designed completely differently uh so no i don't i think you're thinking about this a little too much literally for minimum item level just grab whatever would have been the best gear for you in that synced item level and that's it. There's like nothing else that's worth calculating at that point. Some people don't even do that. Like you don't even need to do that for 90% of the things that you're doing it for. But if you're like absolutely concerned with maximizing minimum item level, like that's it. You don't need to like make all these like crazy calculations and whatnot. It's very simple. Just grab gear, uh, just grab gear and, and fits around that item level and you should be fine. That's what everyone else does. Most people grab gear that's even lower item level than what the synced item level is. Because they want a challenge, because most of the game's synced item levels are actually too high for the game. Uh, not all of them, but a fair portion of them are actually too high for the game. So, I don't know. I don't keep track of all this stuff. It's not worth keeping track of. It's very simple. The fights are all the same no matter what. It's not complicated at all. You just show up and do it with some minor things. The differences are so minor, it doesn't even matter. So, all this stuff is A, stuff I don't know, and B, stuff that doesn't matter, pretty much, in terms of getting this kind of content done because it's been done before and that's it there's, there's not there's not much more to it uh question number three uh hello mr happy baddie that's not my name uh my question is how do you feel when you uh when you bump with fan subs on a on a duty roulette first time i ever saw you was in dunscape when i was new gave you a big wave so i'm sorry if i didn't wave back a lot of the times i have that little like box for a chat in the bottom left i some, i'd honestly either just ignore it half the time or i have everything filtered so i don't see anything uh half the reason because sometimes you know shout chat or say chat or party chat just it goes nuts with like a mix of people fighting like i've seen so many times someone's like hi it's mr happy and then it's literally for the next 45 minutes just two people batting their dicks about whether or not they like me and i'm like you know what? i don't want to deal with it it's not worth it's not, I'm just trying to play the game at that point. You know, I'm not trying to have like, hey, you notice me, you notice me. Ah, look at me. Uh, no, I'm just like, I'm just trying to blend in. I don't be like, oh, hey, look who's, look who's here. I, so I, I'm sorry if I missed that, but that's literally what I do. I don't, I feel fine. It's just, I just don't like it when people butt heads. Because it's like, ultimately, you're all there to do the same thing. So in something like Dinscape, like a 24 man, it's like, it shouldn't matter whether or not I'm there. It shouldn't affect another player's performance. It shouldn't affect another player's, I guess, mood negatively. Um, it's just, I just want to show up and, and do things. If somebody says, hi, thank you for what you do, I'll respond. I'll be like, thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Um, and then if somebody's talking shit, I just stay quiet, pretty much. And that's if I even see it in the first place. But depending on my mood, like how much of a mood I'm in to like kind of just want to unwind or just, you know, just try to relax. Sometimes I just don't see messages in the chat, but uh, I always feel bad. Sometimes I see people doing the emojis and I can guess they're doing them at me at the very least. And I'll wave back or something like that. But, uh, and sometimes I'm streaming, so I'm just not reading. Like I'm just looking at my stream chat the whole time. And then some people have to come over from the duty roulette stuff into my stream chat in order to say hi to me because I'm not looking at the actual game itself. So it's, it's complicated because I want to be able to thank people who are saying, Thank you, and I want to be able to ignore people who aren't. And in the, if I'm in a not a great mood, especially recently, sometimes I just need to shut it all off and just clear my mind of all that. So and my reaction is always grateful when I run into people with a positive or neutral attitude. I even like people who are just like, yo, just chill. Everyone just chill. Like, he's just trying to play the game. Just chill, you know? Whatever. I'm like, I appreciate those people because they're just the neutral. They're just trying to keep everything chill. And then I sometimes I just can't shut out the negativity, so I just need to shut everything off. It's it's a pain, but it all depends on my mood on a day-to-day basis. Uh, question number four. Hey, Mr. Happy. What do you think the current speedrunning meta heavily, re uh, heavily relying on LB? Didn't I answer this last week? I'm pretty sure I answered almost exactly this question last week regarding the LB strats. Um, I think, no, if it wasn't last week, it was like two weeks ago. It's like, it's whatever. I don't really care. Speedrunning is such a minority that I don't, I don't really care if that's what, if that's what the meta is for that content. 
good. The people who are doing it, let them worry about it because they're the people who are actively participating in it. So it's not, a, it's not relevant to me. It doesn't really affect me in any way. So let them have their fun. I was thinking that with the speedrunning meta. Let them have their fun. Just don't try to enforce it when you're not doing the speedrunning meta, which is the big problem our community tends to have. Uh, and then do you think healers who aren't speedrunning should prioritize current piety? You should not be asking me questions about melding for healers because I don't play one. So I'd have to be passing along anything I'd bothered to memorize to you. And I don't have anything memorized. I know most people I see are crit and piety. Um, piety, I definitely see during early prog, especially a lot more. I don't know about late prog. I know I see vitality melds on accessories. That's that's the big one. Everyone I know just, as if they know an ultimate encounter is coming out or they're working on Savage, they haven't beaten it yet. Vitality right side. I just, I barely see anyone not do vitality right side. Probably towards the end of 4.4 because there will not be an ultimate in 4.5. People will probably lean away from Vit Melt as they beat 4.4's raid tier. Uh, but other than that, I don't know. I don't play healer. So I can't really answer this from a place of intelligence. And it would be kind of silly of me to try and do so when I don't actively participate in discussions about healer materia melding. So I can't offer you a real answer. Uh, and I don't even know exactly where to point you for that answer. I mean, it sounds like something that would be like a, like a quick Google search, quick Reddit search or something like that. And then that would be the end of it. But they would probably have better information for, uh, for you than I would. So just being honest with that one. Question number five. Hey, Mr. Happy. Hope you're having a good day. I am having, I'm having a good day. I can play Octopath all day. So I'm having a good one. Uh, two questions. Uh, ever since the Realm Reborn launch, we seem to get an expansion every two years, which means we, we should be seeing another expansion in summer of 2019. And that's the pace that they've been aiming for. They wanted, ideally, an expansion a year, but he knows it's impossible. He's like, there's no way we can do that. So, uh, And it makes sense, you know, from all standpoints, why A, you can't do it, and B, why you would want it. But uh, I feel like Stormblood still has a lot of story to give us, and if we get an expansion, they will start to wrap up Stormblood content soon. I mean, they will be. We already know 4.4 is the final tier of Omega. We know there's no more ultimate tiers. Like, it's already in the process of wrapping up. And 4.3 was explicitly stated not just to be the end of of the Doma side of the story, but really kind of the encapsulation of uh, of Stormblood altogether. We still have more things to explore overall with characters that we've already introduced in Stormblood. Uh, that's especially expressed towards the end of 4.3 when a lot of very heavy hitting bombshells are dropped on the on the players to know like, oh my goodness, this is happening, that's happening, that I think is happening. Uh, but as terms of Stormblood itself, it's already kind of come to a conclusion. We are working our way into the story that will develop into 5.0. And that's what you're going to see in 4.4 and 4.5. Um, do you think we're getting expansion next year? Yeah, I think we are, but I don't know if it'll be in June. Like we've had them in June, I think it was June... 20th and June 23rd, I think, were the two dates uh, of the actual launches for the expansions, not including the early access dates. So, yeah, I don't know if it'll be in June, though. Like, with the live letters, or with the fan fests being a little bit later than usual, uh, it could be July, but uh, definitely summer. Definitely summer. At least I think it'll definitely be summer. Um, and Stormblood has probably a 4.4 and a 4.5 to offer. Probably won't be. I, I'm sorry, more and more, I don't think there'll be a 4.6. I just don't think they'll push back another an expansion launch any any further than that. I know a lot of people were looking at uh, were looking at some of Square Enix's financial projections, and in the financial projections, it says there will be no expansion launch in the next year. So their projections, I guess, for their MMO department will be a little bit lower than expected. And people thought, oh, that means there won't be an expansion within the next year. And I was like, well, they mean they work in fiscal years. You have to remember that that works in fiscal years, which I think theirs ends, I think the fiscal year ends in March. So it's, you know, you can't from April and on, that's a different fiscal year, meaning you can't really judge that. So it's, I don't think, I think it just has a 4.4 and a 4.5 to offer. I just don't know what's going to be in those other than the usual stuff. Uh, moving on to question number six. Question number six. Hey, Mr. Haps, first time asker. However, can't think of a bonus. Take a rain check. Take that rain check as long as you want. Bonus, never mandatory. Always appreciated. Two questions for you. One, I'm interested in Savage. I ever get nervous at the same time. I get this question all the time. Breaking the ice into Savage, you just got to start pugging. Like, if you have no experience, you just got to put up with the terrible groups. The best time to break into Savage is when... Uh, 
is when a brand new raid tier is out. So when 4.4 drops and everyone's trying to learn it for the first time, if you can get in, get those clears early on and then kind of make a name for yourself, that's the easiest point the first two weeks after a new raid tier is launched for you to kind of establish a presence inside of Savage Raiding and to kind of start looking for a team in some way. Even if it's just pickup groups, if you already have a clear, getting a re-clear on the week is not nearly as bad as trying to get a clear on a learning party. So you gotta just hit up the either the, the party finder or you gotta have friends who are gonna raid with you and wanna show you the ropes and whatnot. Uh, question number two, uh, what gear would you recommend starting off with first time doing Savage? Whatever item level you can get to the highest. That's it. The highest possible item level you could be at that is above what is the minimum expected for that raid tier. So if the minimum expected is 350, anything that and higher is what you need going into Savage, and that's it. Like, you got to remember the people who beat it first in the first day or two, they're working with full item level 350 stuff for the last raid tier, and people now have, like, Dim, they're demanding like full 360 full 365 and stuff you don't need all that you just need 350 and to be playing well enough and that's all you really need anything more than that is just a buffer for uh for human error pretty much and question oh that wasn't a question number three there's just a little part here at the end uh in order to augment your gear i made i have to make my way up in savage where i can start getting the item to exchange for the polish uh no you can do the 24 man the 24 mans and the hunts will let you upgrade 360 gear to 370 so you do not need to do savage so you, you don't need to do it i mean you're free to do it but that's you have two other options you have the 24 man item exchange and you have the hunts so those will also get you from 360 to 370 so be sure to go look into that as well uh let's see number seven yo in regards to 14 yo by the way Yo, you and I don't completely see eye to eye in the current uh, direction and available content in the game, but I'm curious to know, what would you change about the game if you could? What would you add? What would you take away? And lastly, what is your major dislike? Uh, I feel like that's a fair question. What's change about the game if I could? I'd like to see more repeatable or grindable challenges. I mean, challenges, you know, I, again, I, I always look to World of Warcraft's Mythic Plus as just such, it's like the peak of replayability in terms of a game system that has a good reward structure, it has a good, uh, it challenges the player in, in random and adaptable ways, similar to, I guess, what Heaven on High does, but on a, on a very different level in terms of what it's actually asking of the player. And uh, it's just, it's just stood the test of time for an expansion, it looks like it will continue to stand the test of time in terms of World of Warcraft. It's one of those ideas they landed on and it works. And I'd love to see something similar. You know what would be really cool? In Heaven on High, what they should do is they should do seasons. We have PvP seasons. Let's have Deep Dungeon seasons where they give you a set of 100 floors and there's specific rule set across all 100 floors. And it is consistent. And they take the people with the highest score at the end, you know, which is a combinate, which is, you know, enemies killed. And uh, whoever does that gets something. I don't know. Just something to encourage the constant competition of, of being on the leaderboards for Heaven on High. Uh, a PvE ladder, in a sense. I feel like that could be something that could be really good. And as long as you make sure it's consistent every time, you know, that opens up opportunities for communities to do things like, you know, solo races or solo challenges against each other or just competing for the highest score or being more motivated to reach for that highest score. There's, I feel like there's just a lot they could be doing with Deep Dungeons that uh, could add a lot more to the game, a lot more replayability and just another subculture, another niche of people that find themselves logging in to compete in this in this ladder that's there all the time. Um, what would I add? Oh, that's what I would add, I guess. I would add that. Um, that's the thing. And what would I take away? I would never take something away from a game. It's already there. Uh, Diadem, I, Diadem and Lords of Verminion, I would love to go back in time and show them what happens and be like, just do something else. <laughs> Listen, see all this? Just do something else, okay? Just. <laughs> Just, just do something else. The fact that they've even spoken about potentially removing Diadem altogether and just distributing its rewards elsewhere, I think that's hilarious because that just that just speaks volumes about it. Um, what is your and then I guess what is your major dislike? Um, I guess it's again. It, I guess it kind of goes back to the Heaven on High thing. It just it feels like they could be doing more with certain concepts and they haven't yet or aren't intending to. Uh, I'd say that's probably the most major dislike is they want to get the feature out. They want it to be functional. They want it to stand on its own two feet. They want it to be played. And then that's kind of where it just ends. There's no sort of 
means through which they try to encourage greater depth from the player. And I don't mean in things like specs or, or player build. I mean in, in approachability and the way players actually look at an encounter and go, okay, can we approach this in a different way than the way we're used to doing it every week that drones on? There's just very little from in, in degrees of asking that. Like going back to Heaven on High, it'd be cool to even be able to just select debuffs to demand for a set of floors. Like maybe I want to try to climb Heaven on High with no items. I want to set a no item solo for Heaven on High. And they can gauge difficulty of that and determine what would be a reasonable place to reach with absolutely no items going through up on Heaven on High. And I don't know, there's just, there's there's not enough custom ability, uh, customizability and, or customization, I guess. And, or, or just expression of depth where I'd like there to be. Uh, so there's, I'd say that's the big thing. It's all, it's all set and there's just no room for it to expand, or at least they won't create room for, for things like that to expand. Uh, moving on to the next question. Question number eight. Hey, Haps, how you doing? I'm doing all right. You doing all right? You say you doing all right? I'm doing all right. You doing all right. Long time since I asked questions. So here it goes. You remember Am to poor keep normal? Yes. The one I always called Amp, Ampador. I call it Ampador for like five months after it came out. Why was the strat for the last boss there to tank him in the back corner? Is that really a thing or just someone trolling when I was new to the game? So the reason why you tanked him in the back corner is it was basically kept the melee in the safe zone for the statue. It kept everyone there. You could basically tank him there and never move for the room-wide AoE. Nowadays, you can just ignore the room-wide AoE and not even hide behind the statue. In fact, I think you can kill him before he even does the first AoE. So obviously things have changed a lot, but moving him to just next to the statue, while it does have some other minor annoyances that can happen there, it basically makes it so you're always in range of him. Your melee always have uptime. Your casters don't really have to worry about moving the entire time. Your tank has uptime. Your tank doesn't have to worry about relocating the boss, running away from the boss. It's There's a lot of benefits to it. Now, there's obviously benefits to other strategies people have had where you face his tail towards the wall. I always like to do the thing where you tank him towards the statue, but you also turn him around to make his tail face the wall. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because there's if you're tanking him over there, there's no reason for everyone to be in the middle of the room uh, behind him in the first place. That's the whole point of the strategy is everyone just hangs by the statue. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, no, it was it's super legitimate. There was actually a, good, a few good legit strats for that fight, but... Uh, those are some of the reasons why that was kind of the way to do it back then. It's a very it's a very throwback question, but uh, it's one that I haven't had to explore in quite some time. Question number nine. Yo, Mr. Haps, hope you're doing okay. Hope you had a safe trip and nice time with your family. I did have, I did have all those things. I was going to lab label them one by one, but I did have all of those things. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Question for this week is just a real quick one. I remember you mentioned the type of webcam you use was in Logitech, but I can't remember which one you said and what type it was to get. So keep in mind, if you're just starting to create content with a webcam, the Logitech C920 is a really reliable, cheap one. It is not the highest quality, and you do have to fiddle around with the lighting for it a little bit in order to get it to display what's not like a, a like a like a just a destroyed like hue on your face and whatnot but it's it's almost everyone's first webcam for streaming if they don't have something else um if you get serious about it later on you usually get something like uh, like a video recorder uh like i have a canon hd like a full-on like 1200 uh camera and it's just hooked up to a capture card that's what i'm looking into right now and that is always going to be better but it's just unreasonable to expect someone to have that for their first thing to hook up if you happen to have one already and you just need the capture card then it changes things a little bit uh but yeah the logitech c920 is the one you're specifically asking about in that question so uh start with that one that's definitely the one i know everyone has started with and this looks like it's going to be the last question over on the forums. Hey, Mr. H. Appsapsy, happy to have it, happy to have it, happy to have it, man. I don't know. You burned through all my questions. Again, it's not how the question where it works. So no roulette today. Well, listen, if the question was if the question was good enough the first time, then I wouldn't have asked the other two. So I just I just didn't. I was like, I'm not happy enough with this first question. I need another question. Uh, and then uh, is there a way to get the Dreams of Faith items as non-attendees? So Dreams of the Faith, isn't that the, that's the item from the last fan festival, not the next one. So first of all, there was a way to get it, but it was to purchase the digital stream for the 2016 
Fan Festival, not the 2018 question. And two, can you buy that on the Mog State? I don't know if you can. So, as far as I, if you can't buy it on the Mog Station, then I think the answer is just no. I don't think you can get it anymore. But that's only because I don't pay attention to the Mog Station because I don't buy anything off the Mog Station for myself. Uh, my Twitch channel says you can't buy it yet. So, no, there's there's no way to get it right now then because I don't think you can still buy stream access uh, even like this late just for archiving access. Pretty sure you can't do that anymore. And there's, I don't, don't think there's any other way to obtain it right now. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. So, uh, no. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap for the questions over on the forums. Now, because I'm doing this all in one take, we are not doing live Twitch questions this week. I am just going to take this and its whole chunk and ship it over to YouTube. And that's how we are going to do it. So, there you go. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I'm missing, so uh, thank you for watching this week's episode of Mondays with Mr. Happy. If you have questions for next week's episode, where hopefully I won't be in as much of a rush because we'll be a week ahead, or we'll be a week through uh, through Octopath at that point. Maple Story 2 will also be very much through in terms of the closed beta, since that's this Wednesday. Then, uh, yeah, if you're not going to be there on the live show, and I can actually do a normal edited show, then you can either show up next Sunday between 1230 and one p.m. pacific or you can ask your questions on the forums on the youtube video just go under to the description there's going to be like a forum post there it's going to say mondays with mr happy number 203 weekly q a thread and you click that and you go there and you sign up and you ask the questions there and then it's all good but anyway uh there's a million other things i want to say right here about a bunch of other things but i'm going to just wrap it up because it's ready it's 5 20 it's 5 26 right now and I got to wake up in like six, seven hours. So thank you for watching Twitch. I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes while I get things taken care of on the YouTube side of stuff. So thank you for watching. I will see all of you next week for next episode of Mondays with Mr. Happy. And until then, take care. And also, I hope it doesn't include this part at the end.